Hello and welcome to Media MD, where each fortnight we take a piece of media and we prescribe it to each other that the other person somehow hasn't seen. I'm Ruben Morehouse. And I'm Elliot Debold. And this week I am coming to you with a TV show. Mm-hmm. Uh, it ran for two seasons of about 22 episodes each. Just says payback for, for yes. Stargate. <laughs> um, um, is this half hour episodes or hour long? They're half hour. Okay. Uh, but, well, we should name what the show is. Sure. This show is called Young Justice. Oh, um... That's one of those animated DC ones, right? You know what? Yeah, let's dive in right there. This show is animated. It's kind of on the line between kids show and family show slash whatever show. Okay. Um, I'd compare it to like Avatar Legend of Korra, you know, where it's like sort of kind of a kids show, but definitely deals with darker topics. Okay. So more adult topics. Yeah. Enough that like. People our age can still yes, enjoy. it's not just for kids because because you, you aren't the first person to recommend this to me. Uh, another another friend who's a big Batman fan he suggested I start here if now, I was going to watch they animated shows. A child or an adult? No, he's older than us. So. He's older than us, so yes. that's good. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah, so I'm some age. What am I? Twenty two, something like that. <laughs> uh, and I I saw the show. I, I binged it pretty recently, maybe like three or four months ago. Okay. Definitely enjoyed it, and it definitely deals with a lot of pretty serious topics. Okay. Um. So let's talk about it. It is a DC animated show. Mm-hmm. Um. But it's not. So I'm sure you're familiar with the DC animated universe, which kind of existed uh, a little while ago. I mean, wait, not. I sort of know of it. I don't yeah. really know anything about so, it. I've, I've never been a big DC, or for that matter, Marvel person. I, I've like my comic book experience is generally limited to the, the big budget movies. So your, right. your recent Marvel Cinematic Universe, yeah. and maybe some Spider Man, Christopher Nolan, uh, Batman. Fair enough. And did uh, you see Man of Steel, Batman vs Superman? Yeah, I actually thought those were okay. We will have to talk about that another day. <laughs> uh, but for now, uh, Young Justice. So. You've probably there. There are very famous animated shows. There's um, there's Justice League show, which later turned into Justice League Unlimited, I think. And okay. there was uh, Batman the Animated Series, which is a big one. Yeah. Um, and these were kind of the cornerstone of the old DC animated universe. And that kind of died out. Actually, I should butt in. I think I uh, so I used to uh, when I was back in high school. I would swim at mm-hmm. five in the morning, so I had to mm-hmm. wake up at four thirty. And so I would watch, I think it was part of the Justice League. I'd get to watch about 10 minutes of those episodes. <laughs> At 4.30 in yeah, the morning? Yeah, so that what market was, were they playing to? <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. Very, but, uh, very, I remember very enjoying those a fair bit. That was, that was the, the only time I had normally experienced uh, the the Martian one. Martian Manhunter. Yes, that's yeah, him. Okay. Um, yeah. I thought he was cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's in this show. It's kind of... So I'm not 100% sure on this, but from what I understand, that DC continuity kind of died off, and then this was their attempt to soft reboot it. Um, okay. And this show ran for two seasons, and then they were going to do a third season, but then they kind of cut that off due to, I think, low ratings, and then rebooted another show called Teen Titans Go, which is a much younger-aimed show that's that I would say doesn't deal with as dark themes. It's a lot more, like, quirky and, you know, okay. you know the kind of show I'm thinking. It's yeah. kind of... Uh, maybe Spongebobby, but later Spongebobby, it doesn't have that kind of appeal to it. Um, okay. Yeah, and so that that kind of soft reboot of the DC Animated Universe definitely died off. Um, and the reason I would describe this as a soft reboot and not a hard reboot is that the protagonists of this show are the sidekicks. Um, so oh, okay. So the main like characters. Robin and... Yeah, so Robin, um, Kid Flash, oh, yeah. Miss Martian, who is Martian Manhunter's Niece in air quotes. Um, okay. There is Roy Harper, who you might know oh, from, from Arrow, Arrow. Yep. and Artemis, another archer who is being introduced in the next season of Arrow. I think. E- yeah, I think I remember reading that. Okay, um, and um, so no, like Supergirl, Aqualad. Or... There's no Supergirl. There's Superboy. Who is one of them? Yes. The Kryptonians aren't very good at being extinct, <laughs> are they? Like, yeah. So <laughs> you know, it's kind of like there's like Flash and Kid Flash and Flash Junior, and you know. Okay. Yeah. Um, but this is definitely about the sidekicks. Um, that's, and, an, that's, like, that's that's an interesting take. Like, yeah, it's and it's girl. to the to the background. The first season, the start of the first season, especially, is these guys want to be part of the Justice League, but they kind of haven't proven themselves, and so they they sort of rebel, and then they do they go off on their own and strike out and do this kind of other mission, and then they succeed, sort of. And Batman and Superman, who are at the helm of the Justice League, are like, 
you know, all right, you guys have proven yourself, you're not in the Justice League yet, but you'll be the young Justice, and then, you know, <laughs> um, and so they kind of strike I, out. And I, I'm sure the the end of the season is there's a mission that the Justice League failed to do, and they got captured, and young Justice has uh, to save them. Yes, <laughs> sort of. There's a lot of, interestingly enough, this show goes to a lot of very weird places. Um, okay. It goes to a lot of mind fucky places. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I don't think it'll spoil too much when I say... At the end of, I think, season one, yeah, it must be season one, uh, this group, this conglomerate of villains, which they've been fighting the whole way through, who is led by Vandal Savage, um, cast this spell, which splits the world into two. One group is the, is below 18, everyone in below 18 goes into one kind of subworld, and everyone above 18 goes into the other subworld. Weird. Okay. It is a very weird, (laughs) but it, it makes more sense in the show, obviously, and, uh, yeah, it, it just results in very interesting ways. And they take... There are a lot of heroes that have very strange powers. Like, there's one hero who you probably haven't heard of who is called uh, Captain Marvel, also known as Shazam, I think. And oh, he's like he's, a 12-year-old he's, he's boy. He's the kid. No, I, I saw him in Justice League, I think. And yeah. he, he has, like, a ring or something. Oh, so I don't think he it, has a ring. But... Oh, it turns him into, like, a fully grown adult superhero. Yes, he, he's a 12-year-old boy, but he turns into a fully grown adult. And so yeah. he is very pivotal to this world where it's split because he can go between the worlds. Ah, okay, that makes but sense. there are a lot of really interesting things that play off these kind of quirks of these lesser-known superheroes. Um, and I, I say lesser-known, maybe to me, because I'm more of a Marvel fanboy. Um, I have kind of recently started getting into comics, but basically exclusively Marvel comics. Um and this show, definitely, it's the kind of show where each episode they'll have this kind of B or C list villain or hero or whatever, and you'll definitely just start, after the episodes, I'll be like, wow, that character was really cool, and you start oh, Googling yeah. them. And <laughs> um, Yeah. I would warn you, though, to not Google things while you're watching this show, because there are a lot of plot twists that come through oh, that yeah. will get spoiled for you if you Google okay. too much. Yeah, that's, that's good to know. So cause... watch this episode without Google, uh, okay. this show without Google. Yeah, so what should we talk about? Um, so there are characters that you will know. Uh, audience members may not know. We both watch all the CW vs. DC shows. I don't know why I still watch all of them, but I do. <laughs> there are yes. some that you probably shouldn't be watching. Um, so that's Flash, Arrow, uh, Supergirl. And Legends, Legends of, of Tomorrow. Legends of Tomorrow. How could I forget the craziest <laughs> one? Um, yeah, so there are characters that you will recognize. Um, so like Green Arrow and uh, Black Canary, obviously. Um, yeah. There's the actual Justice League that's kind of in the background. Um, Flash is in there, obviously, but uh, Kid Flash, who is coming up in the next season of Arrow, uh, a Flash. Yeah. Roy Harper, who is in Arrow. Artemis, who is about to be in Arrow. Uh, and then there's Robin, Aqualad, and Superboy, who you haven't seen yet. Yeah. Um, Miss Martian, who I think is going to be in Supergirl, if I heard correctly. Uh, I'm not sure. I know the, Mesh, the, the Martian Manhunter is in Supergirl. Yes. So... I think they're introducing Miss Martian. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, anyway... They're all the main characters of this. And uh, so it's characters that you will recognize. Um, and they, I'm going to say, at least for all the Arrow characters, they are much, much, much better portrayed as actual characters than uh, <laughs> than in that show. Um, so Arrow in the first two seasons was very dark and very Batman-y, but Green Arrow in this show is kind of as he was in the previous animated shows where he's very jovial, yeah, very my, hearted but he still has a lot of heart, you know. My understanding is that's what the character is normally like. Yes. And when they brought out the Batman y adaptation, that yes. was quite different. Quite different, yeah. So he's very jovial. There's Black Canary, she's still alive, spoiler for Arrow. <laughs> in this, um there's no Felicity or Diggle. Some may say unfortunately shame about Diggle. You know. Um <laughs> uh yeah, but there are a lot of other characters. And there's a lot of I don't want to spoil things, but all the characters have interesting things about them. Okay. Roy Harper's story over the two seasons is definitely pretty hef- heavy shit. Okay. Um, I don't want to spoil it, but it's pretty fucked up in a lot of ways. Especially for a kid's show. Um, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Is it masks? Like, because uh, I, I also watch like Adventure Time, and that's definitely yes. one where... Like, a three-year-old can watch Adventure Time and love it yeah. just because it's like funny shapes and interesting events. But then yes. as an adult, you can you sit get down a lot more out of it. You get all and, these backstory and, pieces, and there's really dark things, but they're portrayed in such a way, and the characters don't necessarily notice it as well. No, so, so the kids it just goes over their head, and then you're as an adult sitting there like, "Did that just happen?" No, it's not like that at all. It's I compared it to Legend of Korra before. I yeah. say it's more like that where it knows, and the in world everyone knows that 
things that are bad happen. It's, it's just straight up dark. Yeah, it's yeah. De- definitely still. I mean, it's still a kids show at heart, or like a, a young teens show, maybe. I don't okay. know how to describe it, but it, there are things that happen. There's one episode where at the end it's oh, i won't spoil this episode too much but at the end it's revealed that it was all a dream basically or okay. simulation slash dream that sure. became real and got out of control and in a worse show that would just be the episode and they would move on but in this show there are serious psychological consequences because a lot of characters die in that episode and it really traumatizes one or two of the characters in particular hmm. okay um yeah and in a it it kind of affects their character arc in a very interesting way. Um, yes. So one more thing I want to talk about is it has two seasons and each season is very much its own story. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, I would say the first season is kind of the story of the group forming and how the group happens. And then there's kind of an overarching story that comes in towards the end. Whereas the second season is just one story from start to end. It's all about this thing. And there's a significant time jump between the first and second season as well. Okay. So it's kind of anthology esque in that way. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I've seen I've seen a few shows do that, and they're they're normally animated ones, the ones where yeah. it's like they cover their bases in case they don't get another season. Because I think it's it's a bit more chaotic in the animated world. It's yeah, for sure. That's like you can get renewed. Um, yeah, but it's definitely a very interesting show, and the stories definitely play out in very interesting and sometimes fucked up ways, <laughs> which is very appealing to me. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, check it out. Yeah, I think that's all I have to say about it. Report back to me in two weeks if you can finish a a lot of ep- maybe 40 or 50 <laughs> half an hour episodes in two weeks. Get back to me and see how you go. See what I can do. Awesome. Two weeks Two later. Weeks and I've watched all 46 episodes. 46. Of, of Young Justice. Yeah, 26 in season one, 20 in season two. Oh. Uh, I think even if you told me just to watch the one season, I probably would have ended up doing them both. I Yeah, I really got into this show. So um, that means it's positive. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, I think this is the best one so far. Um, oh, all right. I don't know. I don't know what. Nailed it. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I don't know what got me so much of this show, but yeah, I got, I got really hooked. Um. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a good, it's a good show. It is, it is the, a really good show. I think the thing that stands out is the storytelling in the show is just done. Yeah, well. and um, go, drawing back to what you were saying, you compared it to the Legend of Korra, and I would say Korra, Korra, Korra. Okay, Korra. whatever. Um, this is a serious podcast. <laughs> same thing. Um, it, it, in the sort of sense of the age, it was sort of marketed mm-hmm. at, but uh, I, I had issues with um, Legend of Korra's. Uh, storytelling like throughout the seasons. Yeah, it was it was patchy. Uh, I I had somewhat similar issues with this one, but overall I felt like this was just like a better show, a better in, show. in the yeah. in those aspects, uh, and much more interesting characters than than Korra. So before we dive in too much, let's talk about the plot a bit more, just yeah. so people who haven't seen the show so, can kind of get to it. Yeah. So, so I guess we'll do I'll, season one. Oh, do you I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll sort of do a quick rundown. So yeah, essentially the show opens and you've got like quite a few of these sidekicks. Uh, and they're, they're all sort of, they're really keen to join the Justice League, mm-hmm. uh, for various reasons. So they're, that's Batman, oh, Batman. So yeah, it's Robin, Robin, Kid Flash, Aqualad, who's Aquaman's sidekick, obviously, and, and uh, Roy Harper. Speedy, yeah. who's, he's um, from Red Arrow, oh, sorry, who's Green Arrow's sidekick. Yeah. Uh, so they get into a bit of a fight with the Justice League about being able to join, uh, eventually they go and try and solve this problem on their own to prove that they're worthy. Mm-hmm. They end up finding that this evil company has cloned Superman into, uh, and made this super boy. A younger clone of Superman, um, yeah. And so they rescue him, and essentially those guys get together, and the Justice League's like, yeah, okay, you did pretty well and the justice league is too public like we we can't do all the missions we want to do because mm, we're too well known well so they agree to let the kids form this secret young justice team but we should point out that roy harper speedy kind yes. of feels like they're just giving they're they're not actually letting him them join the yeah. proper justice league they're he, just giving them something. he finds the whole thing pretty patronizing so yeah. he bails. so he bails and does his own thing and he kind of comes into the story but always as an yeah. outsider he so yeah he drops in and out but uh and then so a few more people like you're saying miss march and miss uh, martian artemis. joins in like episode two or three yeah. artemis joins like 10 or so episodes through yeah. right uh then, then zaytana comes in right at the end of season one the female magician daughter of yeah. I've forgotten the, the character's name. Um, comes in at the very end of season one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then and then uh, essentially, you know, they're fighting all these little 
one off lots of bad guys, but at the end of every episode there's this illusion <laughs> that um, that they, is part of a bigger picture. They do this weird um, thing. So they kind of hint at this a writing group of villains called The Light Yes, um, throughout all of season one. And then they'll have these episodes which are for all intents and purposes self-contained. And then at the very end, they throw in a little scene of like the villain from that episode being like, I failed The Light. I'm very sorry. And, and The like, Light's like, no, it's all according to our plan. And so it's um, like, oh, this was The Light again? <laughs> Everything's um, The Light, yeah. But that's sort of, yeah, that culminates at the end of season one where mm-hmm. The Light essentially manages to take over the Justice, over League, the Justice League and it's up to Young Justice to, to stand up and They and brainwash, they use these, like, bug they things. they got these, like, nano chips that, yeah. that they put on your neck and it takes yeah. over your body. Yeah, and so one of the plot points of that is six of these Justice League superheroes go off and do something that isn't revealed what they do. No. And then come back later. And but so that, that plays into season two. So that plays into season two. So th- this is why probably my biggest issue with the show is then there's the time skip between season one and season two. Yes. Um, which is five years. Yes. Right? It's, a, it's a five year skip. And um, it aren't like, I'm not a fan of time skips in general, but this one really felt like just a cheap way to suddenly add in a bunch of new characters mm. who I didn't feel were necessary and actually took away from like, they, they ended up with this situation where they had so many characters that nobody got much time except for Blue Beetle. Yeah. So one of the new characters is Blue Beetle, who is a DC Comics superhero. Um, mm-hmm. And he's very pivotal to the plot yeah. of that season. So, so it's called Season 2 Invasion. And essentially the light used the, uh, the members of Justice League who were missing for 16 hours. They went and basically uh, slaughtered a bunch of innocent aliens on an unrelated yeah. planet. And and so that not only took those members of the Justice League out of the picture, because they had to go and, like, stand intergalactic trial. Mm-hmm. And that's um, the big... That's Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. Martian Man, yeah. Hunter, Like, all the, all the really powerful ones, um, all the OP ones. Mm. Um, and so they're, they're sort of off. And then meanwhile, because Earth is now known around the galaxy... As sort this of, uncivilized planet of murderers, basically. Yeah, but also... One that seems to generate so many kinds of superheroes that mm. it, it starts to get invaded by these other races. And so the plot essentially is about the Young Justice team and what's left of the Justice League fighting off this invasion. And eventually but, Blue Beetle becomes pivotal to it because it turns out the beetle that gives him his powers uh, was... Was uh, designed by this invading race as like a, a super soldier kind of thing. Yeah, and and his his um has been... His is sort of malfunctioning, and so rather than being a slave to them... Um, he mostly is independent in control of himself. And then they repair it and that turns him into a slave. And so yeah. he kind of is a traitor for a while and then he joins that, the other team for a while. Yeah. And, but then, then they manage to like make the bug, uh, malfunction again and he sort of helps them save the day. Yeah. And all that. And there was a, you know, and there's the, there's a death in the finale. Um, yes. Kid so Flash so dies. Spoilers. Yeah. Kid, Kid Flash dies. And that was like, that was probably the most I've been affected by a show, probably oh, yeah. since Avatar The Last Airbender. Yeah. Um, like, that was, like, that was, like, the most emotional I've been with Carol. I was like, no, that can't happen. Yeah, because he's, he is a main character. Yeah, right? and, like, and the whole thing was he didn't really want to be involved. Like, mm-hmm. Artemis, you know, who he's he now married to. He goes and marries one of the other group members and starts a she, family. And she's, she's pregnant, right? No, or? she just ends up dragging him back into the hero thing, and he sort of begrudgingly comes and then ends up sacrificing, sacrificing himself to save the world. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's right. It's with the Flash and the younger Flash. And, and Impulse. Kid Flash. That's yeah. Right. And because he was slower than those two, he copped the brunt of, like, the explosion that yeah, they stopped. Yeah, so died, basically. Yeah. Well, died. He, he, like, well, he, like, evaporated, so I always got the impression that if they'd done a season three, he probably would have They might be, back like, a, he's part of the Speed Force or something. Or he like was that. in some pocket dimension and they found yeah. him again. But for all... He, he dies. Yeah. Um... It's um, pretty heavy. And so, actually, I was reading about the series, and Netflix is apparently considering doing a season three. See, I've been hearing about this for a long time. Yeah. And uh, nothing has been confirmed. There's a lot of rumours. Well, it's I, not... I don't think it's happening until it is confirmed. You you mentioned the that part of the reason the show failed was low ratings, but mm. I actually sort of... I, I, right? looked, I looked this up, and, and uh, the creator said it had more to do... A lot of the funding for the show was coming from um, Mattel, like the toy company. Oh. And the show didn't move toys, so that was yeah. why they pulled the funding. Right. Um, whereas I guess Teen Titans, Teen Titans doing, Go, is so. doing a better job of yeah. um, of pushing toys. And I actually an episode of that came on TV the other day, just after I finished uh, Young Justice. So, so was it better than watch. Young Justice? It it really felt like a cheap knockoff. Oh um, really? <laughs> yeah. It like it, in the episode, it was like Robin was uh, was undercover in the enemy criminal organization it was all very similar to season two of young justice <laughs> um 
And, and then he ended up having a one-on-one fight with a villain or whoever. I forgot what it was. But it, it just felt like, like the lines like and, the, and the choreography of the animation, it was yeah. just a knockoff of Young Justice. Um, but, yeah, I mean, what what really made this show stand out was, like, the characters yeah. and the depth ahead. All um, the characters do have a lot of depth, and so, they each have interesting things about them. Exactly. So definitely more so in season one. I would say mm-hmm. season one's a much, much more interesting but overall. I think that's just because there are so many characters in season two. Yeah, I think that was the problem. They added all these characters, and what in, what what that ended up causing is there was not enough time for anyone. Mm-hmm. So, like, apart from Blue Beetle, who got lots of time just because he was essentially the, the whole plot. Yeah. Um, they were, like, you know, they introduced uh, Beast Boy in season two. Yeah. And well, I, he was... The thing this is something I didn't realize when I was watching season two. Beast Boy was in season one. Yes, he was the character in season he was. one who and got I, the blood transfusion. I found that out by googling because yeah, that that was the other thing. I think they did a poor job of conveying a lot of these. <laughs> yeah, things. showing you what happened. Like I thought at first that they were just trying to drag it out and show you individually, but uh, like as I got about halfway through the season, I was like, no, some of this just isn't clear. Yeah. Um, but it, like, even then, like Beast Boy, yeah, that's the thing. I think he probably still had more screen time in that season one episode than he did in all of season two. Like, yeah, and there were other characters. There were characters who I really liked in season two. Like there was uh, Lagan, the the blue, mm, the yeah, aquatic uh, dude. Um, what was his name? Like Lake Monster or something. Like, yes, yeah, so I don't even there. remember his name. I was sure a week ago. Um, there was the Runaways became a big. Th- the four yeah, kids those who guys, been, like, those adopted, guys cool. they got some development. But they were sort of organically introduced. Like, that's yeah. the thing. These other people... Just, just kind of came around. There was the and, new Robin who never and, really did anything. Um, new Robin and Wonder Girl, I think it was summed up really well. In the finale, you find out that Wonder Girl and the new Robin are now a couple. Mm-hmm. And I think it's, like, Miss Martian who just sort of turns and she's like, oh, when did those two become a couple? And I was just like, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> but they yeah. both had maybe 15 minutes of screen time, like... Why are, why are we meant to care? But the way I felt about that was it was building this universe where there were these characters who you didn't really have that much engagement with. They didn't really get super developed like the main characters, but they still were interesting characters who came in. It felt more comic booky. But, where there are a lot of characters who, I, oh, guess, I don't read the Blue Beetle comic, but he's going to come in and play, or I don't read the Beast Boy comic, but he's going to come in and play a pivotal part in this one or two episodes and then go back to his I own mean, thing. The the problem with that is that I also felt that the original characters weren't getting very much development in season mm. two. Like I think that would have been okay if we'd still had our core set of characters who are actually being developed as the season went on. Whereas really, I Aqualad's arc is really the season two is the closest one that, that comes to any sort of. Decent so we should talk about Aqualad after the five year time gap. It's revealed that Aqualad is now a villain and is now working for his father, who is this aquatic villain. Yeah, um, working for the light and then. It, he does some pretty bad things, like he kills Artemis, uh, mm-hmm. which is revealed to not... It's revealed that he's not actually a traitor, he's just very, very deep undercover, and basically the entire team hates him and wants to kill him, yeah. and the entire team thinks Artemis is dead, and she basically has to retire yeah, yeah, it turns out only Nightwing, Kid Flash, Artemis, and Aqualad know that he yeah. didn't really kill her, and she sort of goes undercover as well. Yes. So not even Miss Martian or Superboy, who are main characters in the first season and throughout mm-hmm. all of it. They... See, there's those, a scene where those Martian two, almost kills Aqualad. Yeah, until she, she reads his mind and finds out. But I, I really felt like Superboy and Miss Martian were the two who suffered in season two. They, yeah. they, they just weren't really featured that much. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's true. Um, and especially because Superboy, I, like, was he, one of he, the most he, interesting he was, characters, he was I think. Potentially my, one of my favorites in season one. Because I love the, I mean, I'm one of those people who believes Superman is generally super boring. Yeah. Because he's just like so OP and like Kryptonite is such a like just having that one weakness that's so obvious. Like I, I Superman. Just, super man. Super yeah. is what you would say. <laughs> yeah. Uh Superboy, like that concept that he had Lex Luthor's DNA in him. Yeah, so he and, was and that gave him the anger issues. He was a cross between Superman and Lex Luthor, and his whole journey was trying to live up to Superman and Superman kind of not wanting Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, him man, as a son. Yeah, it, it was, um, and him trying to come into his own while also basically being a clone of another famous superhero. Yeah, but it was great as well because it capped his powers. It gave him like the the personality and anger issues. Yeah, yeah. and that just made him so much more interesting. Um, and then and then there was a whole arc where Lex was sort of giving him the uh, DNA shield, the shield, which would turn him more into Superman, basically. Uh, and that was that was great as well. And then uh, and then like Miss Martian was another character who really carried season one, like especially yeah. that reveal that she was actually a white Martian, which is basically the the 
the every the, on Mars there are the green Martians like Martian Manhunter and then they're all racist against the white, white Martians, Martians who are like these disgusting aliens and so one thing I was never really clear on whether green the Martian Manhunter knew that she was a white Martian he did he, he did, did? Yeah. okay he basically kept her secret yeah. okay but no, that was um yeah yeah I mean that was a great reveal and especially because like she had that stupid catchphrase from most of season one <laughs> hello yeah Megan. And she kind of like, takes on this Americanized persona called Megan Mars um, because yeah. her her Martian name is like and Megan she, she, even, she has a crush on Superboy and she convinces him to make his name Connor and then oh, it's revealed yeah. that this whole God, show she's based so her life on so uh, her, her life is based on this sitcom called Hello Megan and her character Megan Mars who has a crush on this boy Connor Kent I think it is yeah. um, and ba- so she's basically inflicted that TV show onto <laughs> them and it's a very weird um, reveal into her psyche yeah and then and then to find out she's a white Martian and then there's all the things like because she's she's just sort of unstable but then she's the most powerful psychic like that was that was cool yeah um yeah circling, I- circling around to Artemis and like the mystery around her like it was I, I sort of very quickly figured out some of the members of her family but, yeah well they kind of um, hinted them a lot yeah like so you, you find out Cheshire is, is her there's this recurring va- villain Cheshire who's kind of like a ninja who mm-hmm. basically comes up against them a lot, and you, they really play off each other, Artemis and Cheshire. Right? Yeah, and you quickly realise that they're related, and then you find out Cheshire's her sister. Then you sort of meet her mum, and later you find out that she's uh, Huntress. Yes. Who was in Arrow. Yeah. Uh, and then... Wait, Huntress was in Arrow? Yeah. She was, she was very different in Arrow. She was um, she was that crazy villain in season one of Arrow who shot... Who was like in love with? Oh yes, yeah. I remember that now. Um, God, I but, but so coming back, like, and then there's the big reveal that Artemis's father is Sportsmaster, who is and, and coming to Sport- <laughs> can we just say Sportsmaster yeah. is the stupidest well, character which is, ever? Which is bringing, bringing me to my point, which is when you, when you create these universes with all these heroes from different origins. <laughs> You really just get like a, a mishmash of quality of characters. <laughs> so, like, Sportsmaster's power is that he's good at using sports equipment. Yes, yeah, so, so like hit people with hockey sticks and like throw discuses at people. Yeah, and, he, and it's played very seriously. And he's a very serious villain, like who defeats I mean, them a lot. And, yeah, he. Becomes, but it's just like it's so hard to to watch the show where he is an actual villain and you you like because they call him Sportsmaster and, him. and then he'll like hit you with a hockey stick and like. Um, so yeah. weird, but I, and I think this is some, something where the animated aspect comes over way more than something like mm-hmm. like Arrow or the live action ones. Mm-hmm. When when you have these fights between like Superboy and like uh, just like Cheshire, mm-hmm. like just, who's just a who's ninja, just a ninja, but she has no powers. It's sort of much easier to get away with that sort of stuff in animated, yeah. especially when you bring in all the archers like Artemis and Green Arrow and Red Arrow and Speedy and Arsenal. And that's, that's a <laughs> well, whole some thing. of those were yeah. the same person. Um, <laughs> the like having all the trick arrows that like they have, all those arrows that spill out with foam and mm-hmm. stuff, and like it, it, it's kind of acceptable in the animation, whereas it, it, it would just look work. ridiculous. Yeah, in I mean, action. in Arrow, for example, there's Cupid, the character who is basically. As goofy a character, I would say, as, like, Sportsmaster, but because Sportsmaster is animated and Cupid is live mm. action, she just yeah. doesn't work. So, so despite that sort of difference in quality, not only the characters, like, origins, but also their powers, mm-hmm. it's much easier to get away with than animated. Like, Sportsmaster, they just threw how much he always won and sort of how powerful they made him, even though he had no superpowers. Mm-hmm. Like, it it made you sort of take him seriously, despite yeah. the fact that every time that they said his name, you're like... Come on, guys. Yeah, like, and I feel like in a worse written show, that wouldn't have worked. No, as well. exactly. Um, One more thing I want to touch on is we've talked about basically every character's every character has their own secret, apart from I guess Robin and Kid Flash. Yeah, well, so Robin, Robin sort of they they tried to do it a bit. There's that episode where they go back to the circus he was a part of. Yes, but that didn't feel like this is my dark secret. That just no. felt like this is part of my backstory. No, yeah, that's true. and then Kid Flash kind of has a similar thing, or his. His story basically a lot revolves around how he's not as good as the Flash, and how he is basically just a comic sidekick a lot, and he feels I think, shitty about it. But I, not, I that's not gone into that heavily, I would say. No, I, I think he he's more just the sort of the heart of the team. Yeah. Um, and then we should talk about we should talk about Roy Harper because yeah. I think he has one of the most interesting stories across the two seasons. Um, yeah, I, it's probably, for me, it's either him or Miss Martian, but um, Roy, Roy's has definitely done better in season two. Yeah. So so basically, at the end of season one, he finds out, well, so Speedy, who's now Red Arrow, 
yes. finds out that he's actually been a he's a clone. He's a clone of the original Roy oh, Harper, who was kidnapped and replaced four like, years ago. very early on. Because one career. of the main threads in season one is there's a mole in the team and we have to find out who it is. And it turns out it's Roy Harper because he is a clone and they've kind of they can trigger him, him to deliver information on the team. Yeah. And so then um I mean, season two, he ends up marrying marrying Cheshire, which yes. that whole thing was a bit contrived, I thought, mm-hmm. but it was okay. Yeah. And he eventually finds the original, the original Roy, Harper Roy Harper and releases him. And then I think that's pretty much the last we see of him. Yeah, because after that, the original Roy Harper is missing an arm and feels very, like he, he was replaced. His life yeah. has been stolen by this but other so, person, I mean, basically. Cheshire, Cheshire and the, the clone Roy Harper basically disappear after that. They have a, they go off and have a baby. Yeah, just exactly. And then they become kind of friends with Artemis again because yeah. Cheshire and Artemis are now sisters and like yeah, bros. It's a very weird family. Artemis yeah. has a... But, uh, no, they, um, then, yeah, the original Roy Harper, mm. uh, gets like a cool a fighting arm, arm from yep. Lex and becomes Arsenal. And that was like, that was sort of an interesting arc because he was just a, he was somebody, they let him on the team because everyone sort of felt like they felt knew really him and they felt him. bad for yeah. him. And then like, he was just such a shit team member. Yeah. He was just so bad. Um, they just kind of had to kick him the off. The Nightwing has to kick him off. And that's what pushes the, the runaways away from him. So it's all yeah. very. It, and there's a lot of, one of the things I found really interesting was coming from Arrow, Green Arrow and Black Canary play into the series in very, and they, you can tell their characters are very interesting and deep, even yeah. though they don't get that much screen time, which felt so refreshing to me. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Um, but yeah, I, again, I, I'm thinking, uh, Back to Miss Miss Martian, she mm. was my favorite. She was your so, favorite, especially going into season two. They went they went down that whole path of how like how dark the use of her psychic powers could be. Yeah. So she and that was why she sort of had ended like because it's a mystery for a long time why her and Superboy had broken up. And eventually, you find out that it's because Superboy was so uncomfortable with like all the evil shit she was doing with yeah, her basically. psychic powers. So at the start, they kind of introduce it in a joking way that she's from Mars and she doesn't really know that you can't just look into people's minds and take mm. information. And then it, they kind of bring that back a lot in season two. And so, and that that was like quite a good arc. Like that was mm. that she was probably one of the only original characters that had a good arc in season two. Mm. Um. So, like, yeah, but I, you know, that stuff started to get, like, pretty, pretty hectic. Yes. So we've been talking about the different plot threads, because there are so many plot threads in mm. the show that come in And that's and a side effect of having so many characters. And we haven't even discussed all of them, but I guess we should yeah. take a step back and talk about the show as a whole. Yeah. So, well, so for one thing, um, I mean, I, I think, like, the Avatar, like, The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra. I'd say Legend of Korra. Re- Re- well, yeah. well so I'm, uh, I wanted to bring out like, the choreography of the fight. So I think those two series stand really high up in terms yeah. of just how, how amazing it is to watch the fight scenes in those shows. Yeah. This would be the second best series I think I've seen. Like, the fights were, were actually really cool to watch. Yeah. Um, and and they, they integrated really well the whole team and the varying natures of their powers. So, like... You know, having Superboy doing stuff at the same time while, like, you know, Robin's running around throwing Robin's boomerangs. Robin's always r- running around in the background and doing sneaky stuff while Superboy's yeah. just jumping around and punching people. Yeah, and they they were they were quite compelling. So I thought that was I thought that was really cool. Um, yeah. So what did you think on the whole? What would you give it? So I reckon I reckon I'd, I give this series like a nine. Mm, maybe, that's pretty maybe, high. I think yeah. that might be the highest we've had so far. Maybe eight eight and a half to nine. I don't know. Some it depends depends how much I focus on that time skip. You really didn't like that <laughs> I, time skip. I really didn't like the time I skip. I felt like they had a story for season two and they needed a way to get to a point where that could happen. I get I I don't know. You can fit something in the middle. Like, yeah. I, I've I seen mean, it go the other way. I mean, uh, I, I read like the, the Song of Ice and Fire books by George R. R. Martin. They they were originally meant to have a time skip and then he, he whisked out of that and now the series <laughs> the is The show became like, so popular now, that he had to write the books in between. Um well, I mean, he should have finished the books like 10 years ago if he, he'd just done the time skip, but he thought it was cheap. And so now he's like in this massive knot of characters. And mm-hmm. so, I mean, it, you know, it's, it can go the other way, but in the, in this one, I just felt like the time skip was just a cheap way to add characters who detracted from the show. That brought it from a 10 to a 9, huh? Ah. Uh, or a 9 to an 8.5. 9 to an 8.5. Right, 8.5. All right, fair enough. Thanks outro. for listening. Yes, we are now to outro. <laughs> Don't laugh. Okay. This is a serious take. Yeah. We have an email. We have an email. 
It is mediaemptypodcast at gmail.com. We have a website. It's hard to find, but you can do it. I believe yeah. in you. Um, if you want to get in contact with us, Elliot. Hit us up on that email address. <laughs> <laughs> or for me, you can tweet at, at Zorglord at X-O-R-G-L-O-R-D. Next fortnight, we will be discussing Over the Garden Wall. So Let's prep see. yourselves. Let's do it. Prep yourselves before you wreck yourselves. That's what they say. <laughs>